I got married relatively late in life. It wasn't until my late thirties that I tied the knot. And now I have a three-year-old daughter. A few months ago, I found myself in an unusual relationship with the woman from the apartment below. No one knows about this secret yet, but I'm about to spill the beans. I live in a high-class neighborhood in our country, thanks to the financial support from my wealthy parents. They live in the countryside, but have amassed a fortune, owning lands, buildings, and houses in both urban and rural areas. When I was accepted into a university in New York, it was a given that my parents would buy me an apartment. They did the same when I landed my first job, buying me a place near the office so I wouldn't have to commute. In fact, I've never had to use public transportation because my parents bought me a car growing up in such an affluent environment. I was quite arrogant and dated many women before finding the right one. I met my wife at work. She was a new intern when I had just been promoted to team leader. Of all the women I had met, she seemed the most innocent and pure. We started dating and eventually got married amidst the blessings of many. We were blessed with the world's most beautiful daughter. Just a year into our marriage, my father, grateful to my wife for giving him a grandchild, bought her an expensive, imported car and paid for her postnatal care, which included daily massages. Our daughter's room is a princess dream, filled with all the best toys, and she has private tutors who come to our house for lessons. I still work, but my salary is more of an allowance. We live on an unlimited budget thanks to my parents' credit card. We have daily housekeeping and a babysitter. We shop at the upscale supermarket near our house, buying expensive fruits and meats. Our daughter is growing well, and I can't imagine a happier life. When I look at my beautiful wife, who is ten years younger than me, and our daughter, who has big eyes like me, I lose track of time. One weekend, my wife took our daughter to meet her friends. She told me to enjoy a home party while she was out, but she was so excited about renting a kid's cave for her friend's kids. I often come home late from work, but that day, I had a special encounter. Not long after my wife left, I was sitting on the sofa watching tea when the doorbell rang. It was a stranger who said she lived downstairs. She asked me to open the door because she had an urgent matter. Annoyed, I let her in, and she apologetically said she had a favor to ask. She said her washing machine was broken and couldn't spin dry. She had tried to ask the next-door neighbor for help, but no one was home, so she came to us. She had some wet laundry and asked if she could use our washing machine because it was too hard for her to carry it to the laundromat. While I found her request somewhat inconvenient, I decided to help out the middle-aged woman who seemed at least a decade older than me. She waited for her laundry to spin dry, saying she felt like she had met a savior that day as her car was at the shop. I apologized for my daughter, who had recently started stomping and running around, causing some noise. The lady assured me it was natural for kids to make noise, and told me not to worry about it. She asked if she could look around our apartment, commending our decor. I agreed and sat down on the sofa. Despite the lack of interaction between us, I thought it would be good to get to know the lady living downstairs. The woman started sharing her story without me asking. She had three kids, one in the military and the other two, married and living separately. She said her days were lonely. When I asked about her husband, her expression darkened. She told me he had passed away from cancer the previous year. I apologized for asking but she assured me 
it was okay and nothing for me to feel sorry about. She had moved into this apartment after combining her husband's life insurance payout. The laundry was done, and I suggested she could use our dryer too. She was grateful for my offer. We agreed that she would contact me when the laundry was dry, and she went back to her apartment. Two hours later, the dryer finished, and when I called her, she came up with her hands full. She had brought some side dishes she had just made. I thanked her and promised to enjoy them. She left with her laundry, and I was amazed by the taste of her food. It was even better than my mother's cooking. A few days later, I ran into her in the elevator. I thanked her for the side dishes, and she offered to make more in the future. I told her she didn't have to worry about us but she invited me to visit her apartment whenever I had time. She wanted to show me how she lived. I agreed out of formality. A few days later, my wife suddenly fainted. I couldn't leave to take her to the hospital because of our young daughter. That's when I thought of the lady downstairs. I carried my daughter to her apartment and rang the bell. I explained the situation and asked her to look after my daughter. While I took my wife to the hospital, she reassured me and took my daughter inside. That day, I got her phone number. She sent me pictures of my daughter, playing and even fed her, while I was at the hospital with my wife. My wife had been diagnosed with panic disorder after a car accident before our marriage which sometimes resulted in hyperventilation or loss of consciousness. One day, while I was playing with our daughter on the couch, my wife suddenly closed her eyes and collapsed. Even now, thinking about it gives me chills. After getting my wife's medication from the hospital, I laid her down at home and went downstairs to pick up our daughter. The lady had just put her to sleep. I thanked her and was about to leave with my daughter when she stopped me. She suggested that since my wife would be sleeping, she could keep our daughter until she woke up. I was reluctant, but she insisted that I could stay and chat with her until my daughter was in a deeper sleep. Her apartment was immaculately clean. Looking at her family photos, I could see her husband was a kind man. She started telling me about her family, saying that she didn't realize how hard it was to raise three children because her kind husband had helped her. But now, living alone in this large apartment felt incredibly empty. As she began to tear up, I tried to comfort her, patting her back lightly. She asked for my help, and I realized what she wanted from me, a younger man. Although I knew it was wrong, I found myself drawn into her world. Her friends suggested she find a boyfriend, but she was afraid of older men who might only be interested in her money. I told her to contact me whenever she felt lonely. Honestly, it had been a while since my wife and I had been intimate, and I was feeling the strain. My wife, though freed from most of the housework and chill care, was always tired from the weight of being a mother and even demanded separate bedrooms. I had felt neglected as a husband and had harbored resentment, but spending enjoyable time with the lady downstairs introduced me to a different kind of happiness. Since then, I've been meeting her outside. She brings me joy in a way that is different from my wife and she says she finds herself smiling more than she thought she would with a younger man. Sometimes, when we want to see each other in the middle of the night, we meet briefly on the stairs. I know this relationship isn't ideal, but I can't let go of the charming lady downstairs. That's the conclusion I've come to.